All right, guys, we're in the back shop area, back service department. We're gonna do something a little bit different today. So a lot of people have been asking me like when we're gonna come out with a new like custom bike build and things like that. And we haven't done one in a little while. We got some pretty big projects in the works right now. And so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sneak peek at some of these projects. We got some good stuff coming here really soon. I'm gonna grab Steve and we're gonna show you. We got a born free bike that we're building, a pretty awesome road glide that I think a lot of you guys are gonna like a lot. Definitely check out the Born Free show coming up in June. Check that out. And then Steve's got an awesome Lowrider S that he's working on. And I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek at some of the bikes that we have in progress right now. And you'll definitely be seeing them when they're all done. They'll have their own video coming out on the channel here pretty soon. All right, so Steve's back here working on our Born Free Road Glide. So I asked him if he could take us around the bike a little bit and show off some of like the custom work and stuff that we got going on. Give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek on this thing. What's up guys, Steve Garcia, Service Department. Here, gonna give you an update on our Born Free build. Pretty cool stuff, pretty exciting. I'm excited, I know Matt's excited, Eric's excited. Even though he doesn't smile, he's excited inside. So <laughs> we're trying to get a smile out of him with this one. So just a little update. Uh, our custom exhaust by Gorilla Garage is complete. I think it came out great. It's uh, Jose at Gorilla, super talented dude. He's helping us a lot on this. We come up with the ideas and he makes it come to life, so. His talent is incredible. Thank you, Jose. Shout out to him, Gorilla Garage. Um, the way he made this custom exhaust is with this header modeling kit. Uh, pretty trick. Uh, it's like a big Lego piece. So it has different, different angles that you can modify. It's pretty much creating it out of a puzzle, setting it on the bike, and then creating the angles and beds that you want. It's easier for Jose to modify the exhaust with this stuff here. It just gives them an idea of bands that he's going to need to cut, have cut, um, modify, stuff like that. Um, so I think it came out great. We wanted to run these Pan America bags. Um, we had an idea of the bracket, how we wanted it, but the geometry and stuff like that, that's where Jose came into play. Um, I think he nailed it. They came out pretty cool. We used stainless steel. We used um, custom bungs by Rad Industries. Shout out to them as well. Um, we used modified the stock Pan America bracket and made our own for the road glide. Um, pretty tedious, uh, a lot of maths. <laughs> I wasn't the greatest at math, but thank God for Jose because uh, there was a couple angles where uh, I didn't know what to do. Uh, so shout out to him. I think it came out great. Little hard to see the detail on camera. Um, something that you take really appreciate at Born Free seeing it in person just because the geometry the angles and the cuts is, is pretty gnarly so shout out to him another thing we have going on is the kraus front end inverted front end uh, shout out to cooper at kraus the design around this bike was to run this front end with parts being delayed this front end is back ordered till september so shout out to kraus for getting it done taking care of us and it's coming out great eric's bolting this on today like i said bolt on because it's super bolt on there's no modifications needed no tampering to the frame it's just kind of a plug and play. Uh, Eric's getting that done. It's coming out great. Stay tuned for the finished product. So what do we do, Eric? We put the, uh, we changed out the triple trees here. Yeah, we got the trees mounted up. Getting ready to slide the legs in. Just gonna need a wedge to spread it. We got all the parts at this point, don't we, Eric? It's just a matter of assembling it. Uh, I think there's a couple odds and ends that we're still waiting on, but most everything's here. What do you see as like the most challenging or difficult part of this build? Um, I mean, the first thing was the bag brackets in the rear to get the Pan America bags to work. That came together pretty nicely. Yeah, it worked out pretty well. And then uh, the rest of it, it's not too bad. Pretty, pretty easy stuff. This is a bar setup. It's very moto inspired. Yeah, moto inspired MX. Nothing too wide. Something that can make you feel like you're going to dip into the corner. I know those wide 37 touring bars are kind of way out here. I'm not the tallest guy in the world, and that's just way uncomfortable. Even for the taller guys like Matt, I know this is just perfect. So I think once it's all together with. We're running a new Arlen S top clamp that has a Speedo integrated onto the top clamp. 
to give you, you know, be more on top of the Speedo rather than looking at a screen. I think that's gonna be cool once it's all pieced together. We also went with a black Jiffy stand. We went with the base as well. We got the powder coat in today, which was the wheels, the handlebars, and the uh, fuel tank console. Uh, we went with a silver powder coat to match the bags, and I think it came out great. The new wheel looks way better than the black. Um, I have it over here if you guys want to take yeah, a sneak Yeah, check it out. Dang, looks good, dude. Yeah, so we're, we're matching the wheels kind of with like the raw, like yeah. metal, like aluminum throughout the bike. The theme of the bike was to go raw uh, aluminum, stainless steel look, and I think Andrew's powder coating killed it. We went with Galfer's rotors just to give it that derp, traditional dirt bike off-roady look, and I think or we know it. Super excited to put that on. I think with the Navi, it's gonna really pop. Yeah, so talk a little bit about how we uh, first initially wanted to go with a spoke wheel, and we were looking into the CVO Road Glide yeah. wheels. It's funny that you said that, because I actually have the wheel that I really wanted to run, but the issue being the tire, since it's a 21, there was a lot of dirt bike 21 tires just because they're super narrow. Our issue was a width. So we had to go a different route. I would have wished that I could have used that wheel just because it has the spokes, it has that Pan America theme they were trying to go with. But you know, we can't have everything, but we always have a solution and this was our second choice. And safety is always a big concern too. Yes. I know we don't, we don't want to try to put on a tire that doesn't fit the wheel necessarily. Exactly. So we want a bike that you can feel confident in you know, going high speeds across the country on and not feel like you compromise safety, exactly. right? That was another issue as well. We did a little math and trickery. We could have stretched the tire, but like Matt said, we don't, we're really big on uh, safety here because we are a service department. We wanted this to be something that you can take down the road if you want to go off-roading. Yeah, dude, I'm digging it so far. Yeah, and those, those cases are definitely not designed to go on the, the touring chassis road glide, so. We wanted to do something different that, hey, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you, you, you know, you don't. You're entitled to your opinion. We just like to see uh, different things at Born, at Born Free. That's what, why people go to that show. They want to see crazy. They want to see a trike. They want to see, you know, a stretch chopper. I mean, so I think this is, is going to stand out of the group. So we went with the, the Screaming Eagle Olins in the rear, right? Yeah, we went with the Screaming Eagle Olins in the rear. Are we, are we raising that up at all? Yeah, we're doing the two-inch uh, Olins, uh, two-inch spacer uh, adapter um, from Big Bear Choppers, just to give it a little more ground clearance, just so we can hit a little more rough terrain on the road. So we got mid controls on here as well. Yeah, we did the PM mid controls. Uh, we wanted to give it more of that dirt bike feel. Um, not that the floorboards are ugly, it's just, we want to get as close as possible to what we're trying to create, which is a Pan America, as possible. A um, couple of key features too that I think are super cool that Eric actually made himself on his father's lay at his house was uh, little details. We made a block off out of aluminum. This took Eric about five hours on his day off. So shout out to Eric for working on his day off because you know, he's, he's not a fan of working on his day off. So <laughs> I think it came out great. Uh, Eric's real big on detail and I love him for that. Um, I always pick his brain on as what I can do to make my bike better with details and he always nails it. He didn't like how that random bolt just looked there, so he uh, modified another cover. Can't have here. that, man. That's a terrible bolt, man. <laughs> Get that out and of there. Pretty cool. He put a set screw in there so that oh, it doesn't nice. damage anything. If the customer ever wanted to go back to floorboards, nothing's damaged or grinded out. So. Kudos to Eric. I think so that was something we did in response to putting the mid controls on here. Yeah. These are performance machine mid controls, right? Yeah. We're trying to make it look as clean as possible. Something that we want it to look, always look like it came out of the factory. Yeah. So that's why we try to use as many Harley parts as possible. Those are like rock guards to protect the sliders? Yeah, they protect the slider and then it's also the mounting point for the fender. Okay. Since we removed the front hill toe shifter and shifter, we went with the mid controls. Eric's really big on detail, which I hate him and I love him for it. We could have put a rubber, you know, grommet over it, but Eric goes above and beyond and tries to match what we're really going with to match the jerry cover. The raw so, metal. The look. raw metal, yeah. So all it does is just, you know, two piece with the bolt, grabs on. It just looks way clean. Details that you know a lot of guys will appreciate it's the little things that that i find you know 
appreciative when I see a custom build. It's the little things that I look at, you know. So like, lights, lights are coming in still. Yeah, lights are on the way. I got my parts guy, you know, hounding them. Um, pretty cool piece that Nams just came out. A lot of guys are doing the Baja designs, which is cool. I run it on my bike. We just want to do something different. We try to promote all the newer companies that are coming out just to let them know that, hey, we see what you're doing and we appreciate it. So uh, when that's in, hopefully it's all put together and we can show you that. But it, it's a pretty cool LED setup that I think looks more off-roady and will look good on the bike. And we're, are we working on some more like guards, like brush guard? Yeah. Like the front um, custom fabrication metal work? Our buddy at Gorilla is uh, actually going to modify us some more custom bracketry. We're going to try to do a, not try, we are going to do an engine guard that looks similar to the Pan America that runs off the interfering bracket and ties down into the uh, floorboard bracket. So it's going to have kind of like a triangle with a bend on it. Something more Pan America-ish. We want to have extra support if we're off-roading and we hit a bush or a tree or that, you know, the bike is safe. You never want anything to hit the engine area. When you're out there off-roading, you could pick up a rock. So that is something that we are working on as well. That's something that we can do when the bike's a little bit more um, together, you would say, just so that nothing hits and we know kind of where, where to make modifications. You never want to build these custom bracket trees with the bike uh, all disassembled because you don't have your fairing, you don't have turn signal lights, you never know, you know, when you're clearance. turning the bars, clearance issues. So that's something that we are going to do, but closer to the ending of the build. Seth's going to do a pr pretty cool paint job on it. Nothing too crazy, just kind of clean and simple. That's over at our painter right now. Uh, speak, spoke with him today, kind of gave him some ideas on what we want, and I think he's going to nail it. He hasn't let us down yet, so. So I want to show you guys Steve's personal bike that he's been working on right now. He's got a 2020 Lowrider S and he's doing it all up with the FXRT fairing and the Sport Glide bags or what are now the Lowrider ST bags. But it's kind of stylized close to our world champion Coast Glide build. But yeah, you guys check this thing out and I asked Steve if he would walk us through this thing real quick. Talk a little bit about my build today that I have going to be at Born Free. Uh, 2020 Lowrider S. Uh, what can you say? A money pit, <laughs> but I love it. Being on the Battle of the Kings championship team, designing that Coast Glide, you know, I always wanted to build my own. I just never, with the times, you know, I was getting to get married at the time, buy a house, you know, doing the whole adulting thing. I had to kind of put it on the back burner. All that settled, it's time to have some fun now. So uh, today I'm presenting you my 2020 Lowrider that I'm building. Uh, Similar to the Coast Glide, just a little different. You know, certain things that we didn't do on the Coast Glide that I wanted to do on mine. Uh, went with the FXRT fairing, gonna give it that traditional retro look that I wanted to go with. So I wanted to give it, keep that FXRT retro look. I know the ST came out and the fairing's cool, I like it. It's just I wanted to be different from the ST guys. I feel like the ST guys are their own group and then the old school FXRT guys are their other group. A couple things that we did on the Coast Glide that I wanted to do on my bike that were different. I wanted to do carbon fiber. I know carbon fiber is really coming up and a lot of people are doing performance baggers. I always wanted to do that on my own personal bike, but on a Lowrider S. I was fortunate to have a good friend of mine that does carbon fiber for the car world. I've been trying to bring him into the motorcycle world for years, but at that point I was crazy. No one's going to put carbon fiber on Harleys and look, uh, 15 years later, it's, you know, the big thing to do. So. Uh, I bought a fairing, uh, had him make a mold, uh, created it, came out awesome, weighs hardly nothing. Pretty gnarly stuff. He's popped out a carbon fiber FXRT fairing that I'm actually running on my bike. This thing weighs nothing. As you can see, you know, weight is a key factor in these performance baggers slash soft tails, and Rick nailed it. Seth over at Aggressive Designs uh, has always been promising me a paint job, and now I'm gonna do something special for you. You know, you tell me what's inside your head and I'll get it done. So I gave him a couple ideas of what I wanted, 
I wanted that old school Willie G one low uh, color effect with old school Suzuki GSXR with blue wheels and you know I wanted carbon fiber tied into it um, I wanted gold to keep it that original low RS tank gold and I think he nailed it so I went with the Raptor 2 inch pull plate Kraus by Kraus give me a little closer to the bike uh, I went with an 8 inch hard case riser like I said yeah I could have done 12 but I want something that I'm gonna be able to ride at a long distance be comfortable not have to worry about arm pumps um, so I went with the 8 inch riser um, I always like the speedo relocation up top rather than looking down on the tank so I went with the drag specialties mount had it powder coated black by Andrews trying to eliminate as much chrome as possible so I went with Harley Davidson's uh, speedo gauge covers which is gloss black and it tied into it perfect uh, I've always been a big fan of ODI bars went with the ODI bar the MX bar uh, PM grips with the rental grip I've always been a big fan of this grip just because the rubbers are always been replaceable and it's like a $6.99 part so rather than buying $150 grips every three years every two years $6.99 and you're on your way um, went with a power vision custom mount by Harry Customs out in San Diego uh, super cool dude he's done a lot of 3d printing for me I'm running the power vision 3 on there wanted something to be visible but not you know look at me went with the HPI titanium pipe going with that gold theme I had uh, my buddy over at gorilla Jose uh, torch it for me you know he got it to a certain temperature as his rad torch uh, HPI is a super sick pipe I've always wanted one I was fortunate to get one I know they're like 18 to 20 weeks back ordered or something so shout out to them for getting me one uh, motor work I've never been too crazy about you know stage three stage fours I went with the SNS cam I went with a 475 cam with the updated oil pump and backing plate adjustable push rod tubes um, I did go with the 64 millimeter throttle body by Screaming Eagle the aluminum you know with a bike like this gas mother <laughs> doesn't really matter so I went with it um, SNS lifters um, sounds really good I went with a fueling uh, ventilated dipstick. Um, help with that blow by. Uh, running Sport Glide bag, so I got the Sport Glide bracket, bracket tree. Got the docking hardware to run the bags, and I'm actually running a tour pack as well. Us being that we go on long trips here at Laylaws, the saddlebags uh, isn't enough for uh, you know all my shoes. <laughs> Matt knows that story. <laughs> running the Moon's MC integrated tail lights. I actually. Since I'm running the tour pack, this area isn't quite as visible as I wanted it to be. So I went with the uh, Kuryakin's LED turn signals. So like Matt said, just a little sneak peek of what I've been working on. Uh, it will be in the Born Free show on uh, June 25th, 26th, if you want to see it in person. I have the Baja Design headlight that I'm running. Nice. I'm running the S1s and Amber. I'm going to actually make them a run, uh, I mean, a turn signals, integrated with the turn signals. Uh, sport Glide bags. Uh, Clockworks actually took care of me and uh, sponsored me on a flare windshield. So I'm going to put that on there. I have a custom uh, grill by Harry's Customs in San Diego. Uh, 24 has always been kind of like my baseball number, sports number. Big King Griffey Jr. fan, and I kind of wanted to incorporate that into my bike since I'm going for that performance look. Little surprise when the bike's done, more of that bagger, racy look, and that's that. That's what I got. Yeah, we'll have the full video coming out here in, I don't know, a month or so. We'll see. Yeah, for sure. Maybe sooner. Check me out at Born Free uh, or at Laylos. Come by and say hi. Yeah, check it out at Born Free for sure. Cool. All right, guys, so thanks for walking around the shop with me. I wanted to show off some of these bike builds that we got going on. Uh, I know a lot of you are looking for the next custom bike build on the, sh on the channel. And definitely hit us up at Born Free. We're going to have our Overglide build there, which is our Road Glide. It's all decked out with Pan America stuff. I think you guys are really going to like the, the end result and the final project. And then Steve's bike as well. I think Steve said he's going to put his bike in the, the FXR show as well. And so check it out. Definitely don't miss the Born Free show and stay tuned on the channel, guys. I'm going to be doing like the full treatment and full videos of some of these custom bike builds here really soon.
Thanks a lot for watching, guys. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you're looking for a bike in Southern California, hit us up here at Laidlaw's Harley Davidson. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Later, guys. See you.